Hello and welcome to my Learn With Me Mini Frick series. This is episode 13, The Arpeggiator. So first, what is a Learn With Me series? A Learn With Me series is a series where you follow my end-to-end -end process in learning to get the best out of a synthesizer. In this case, it is the Arturia Mini Freak. So, so far we've talked about all of the sound design parameters, and now we're going to talk about a couple of the performance features, in particular the arpeggiator this episode and the sequencer next episode. Let's first create an init patch. Let's make ourselves a sound. And maybe this. something with this. Let's pull this one negative. to uh, just jump and make a sound pretty quickly here so we don't spend <laughs> too long messing around. Okay, so let's enable the arpeggiator first. What is an arpeggiator? An arpeggiator is an aspect of the synthesizer that allows you to repeat a pattern of notes in some certain sequence and make various uh, changes to how that playback occurs. So let's just turn on hold, which is going to latch a sequence, and let's hit some notes. So one thing worth noting is that if you press the tempo knob, you can change between time divisions or tempo setting. So this is set to a particular time division. And one reason why setting to a time division can be useful is because it allows us to use other tempo synced elements which will work alongside those. As with the arpeggiator, sorry, with the sequencer, you have access to a pair of controls in the sequencer ARP gate section. So the first one lets us set the gate length. So you can hear here, very short gate and a long gate. The other parameter the spice parameter I'm going to circle back to and talk about in a little more detail because I think it's important and it is also important for the sequencer. So, this control section here is the main section we will use to control the arpeggiator now the arpeggiator is enabled. The first eight but, um, touch pads allow us to control how the notes are chosen. So I played in E flat, F, G, B flat, C. So that was my note sequence, and it is playing those notes in ascending order and repeating. That is the upwards direction. If I select down, it will play them top to bottom in order. In this case, it doesn't care what order I played them, it's always going to play them top to bottom. I can play in up down order. So it will play them ascending and descending. We can play them in a random order. So random means that each time it wants to play a note, it will select one of those notes at random. So we can hear this is not a repeating pattern. We have a mode called order. This means it will play them repeating in the order that I played the notes in. 
One thing that can be interesting is if I hit all the notes simultaneously, the order will be based on whatever micro timing the difference between when I pressed the keys was, so the order might be interesting here. We have poly mode, which will play them as chords. We have walk mode, which is a relatively unique mode. What it does is it places the notes into ascending order. Then each time it plays a note, it will do a statistical test and say, by chance, should I play the same note again, the note below or the note above? So we're doing a random walk through the sequence. The next one I think is a very unique option. It's called pattern. So in the same way as random selects randomly, you can get repeated notes and all sorts of things. Pattern, what it does is it takes the notes, it shuffles the order of them, and then it plays in a loop in that shuffled order. So the pattern you can hear is repeating. If I press pattern again, it will now pick a different pattern. For all of these, the next four parameters control how many octaves this happens over. So now this is happening including notes from two octaves, or three octaves, or four octaves. So let's play up down. So you can hear that when it's playing up in octaves like that, it plays all the notes in one octave, all in the next, all in the next, all in the next, and because I was in up down, at the top it plays the up down, then it plays descending, descending, descending. Let's go back to pattern. Now the next two are related, repeat and ratchet. What repeat does is it means instead of playing a chosen note once with the current time division, it will keep the time division and it will play it twice. So in other words, the tempo of the pattern is effectively going to be halved, although each note is played twice. This is something you can hold down. When I release it resumes. Ratchet plays each one twice, but in the same time they took up before, so it's like doubling the... It's like doubling the rate that it plays at. We have random octave, which means as it's playing the notes, there is some probability that any given note be played an octave up or down. The final option available to us here is mutate. So mutate is going to make a variation of the arpeggio by maybe moving a note up or down an octave, changing the gate length of a note, or removing a note. Again. So one of them went up an octave, one of them got repeated last time. Make a new pattern. I can mutate it. I can use random octave go back to the order that they were played in. Now, I mentioned the spice and dice parameters. There are a pair of parameters. They are used together. What dice does is it tells the synthesizer to make a variation on the sequence. The variation may be repeating a certain note, ratcheting a certain note, it may be increasing or decreasing the gate length or playing a note in a particular octave. When you roll the dice, this change gets created, just like when we press pattern, a new pattern is created each time. But it does not get applied instantaneously. Instead, the spice parameter controls a sort of crossfade between your original sequence and this mutated sequence. So let me open the cutoff again. I'm going to turn the spice up. So let's quickly put a few effects in place just to get something a little more compelling. Let's 
So that's added, I think, some nice extra flavour here. So let's experiment a little bit with the gate length. Let's roll the dice. Gates up. Okay, so I think that gives us a little look at the arpeggiator. Hopefully you can see that there are quite a lot of possibilities for performance here, and quite a lot of possibilities I can imagine in using tempo synced, not just effects, but tempo synced modulations to work alongside that arp or the sequencer to give us a lot more flavor and interesting performative capabilities. Add into that the possibility of macros in the mod wheel, and I think you have a performance in a single patch. In any case, um, thank you very much for joining me today, and goodbye. <laughs>